The first reading today is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And if you're using your Bibles, we're on page 630, 630. We're looking at chapter 11, beginning with verse 1. Page 630. And Isaiah is telling us that God's people have not been real good. In fact, God's people have been bad. God's people have been afraid of the enemy, so they've tried to make alliances with other nations rather than trust in God. And God's not happy with that. They've also cheated other people, oppressed other people, etc., etc. Lots of sins against justice. And so God is saying, but now you have paid the price, and you're like a stump of a tree that looks dead, but suddenly there's a little sprout that comes out, a little shoot, and it's a new hope, new life, and a new beginning. And if you stick with God, he will bring peace to this world so that the lamb and the lion may live together. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall come up from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with a rod of his mouth, and the breath of his lips shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and the faithfulness of the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the wean child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord. As the waters cover the sea, on that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples, the nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. This is the word of the Lord. The gospel may be found on page 1148 in your Bible, page 1148. It's from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, beginning with verse 1, page 1148. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then people from, of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him in all the region among the, along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear, worthy, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, 
I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. I think the primary message today of the scripture readings is that we should have hope in a better world, a better heart, a better relationship with our God. Both John the baptizer and John and, and uh, what's his name? Isaiah <laughs> are telling us to repent to change our lives. And they were mainly worried about sins against justice, forming alliances with the enemy in order to try to have peace when they didn't turn to God instead in the Old Testament, oppressing people, sins of greed, sins of putting people down, sins of trying to control people, all those kinds of things. They said, repent of these, and then you will have hope. Then God will raise a sprout from the stump of Jesse something good will happen. You will have hope in your hearts that God can change the world through you. God wants to work through you and me if we let him, if we repent. Let me tell you a little story. There was once a boy named Steve. Steve had some interest in playing the piano his mother thought that was a great idea and tried to encourage him. And one day she took him to a concert by the famous pianist of his day, Paderewski. And they went to the concert hall and they found their seats. About that time, the mother saw a friend of hers several rows up. And she said, now, Steve, you sit here and be quiet and don't move. I'll be back in a minute. And she went to visit her friend and that minute took a long time and Steve became impatient and restless and finally Steve had to get up and move and he started wandering through the concert hall exploring everything and he went through doors that said no admittance doors that said do not enter mother came back saw that Steve was gone began to panic at that point the lights went dim the curtains opened and there Steve sitting at the Steinway piano, pecking out, twinkle, twinkle, little star. <laughs> About that time, Paderewski came out and whispered in his ear, he said, don't stop, keep playing. And he put his left hand around, and he played some notes, some bass notes. He put his other arm around and played some other notes, and pretty soon they were making pleasant music together. I think that's kind of how God works. He surprises us. If we, if we make a trial, if we start doing something good, he comes to our aid and fills in what's missing. He makes good things happen. He puts his arms around us, embraces us, encourages us, and we work together. And that's how it's meant to be. If we just trust and try and make the first step, I will call. <laughs> He's waiting to speak to you. He calls us in various ways. <laughs> now, sometimes we feel, oh, I, he's not going to work through me. I'm just a nobody. Well, you know, God loves to work through nobodies. God, God prefers to work through nobodies. So we're all in this team together, you and me. We're the nobodies that God works through. And he doesn't change the world all at once. He didn't do it 2,000 years ago. He just plants the seeds, lets them grow, and we tend them. And together, we have hope that this will become a perfect world someday. And we will have perfect hearts. We will treat one another well. And we will someday enjoy his presence in heaven. We'll have a, a land where the, uh, 
the wolf and the lamb exist together. Let me read you a little translation. This is a different translation of the poetic thing that we read in the first reading about peace on this earth. The wolf will romp with the lamb. The leopard sleep with a kid. Calf and lion will eat from the same trough. And little child shall tend them. Cow and bear will graze in the same pasture. Their calves and cubs will grow up together. And the lion eats straw like the ox. The nursing child will crawl over the rattlesnake's dens. The toddler stick his hand down the hole of the serpent. Neither animal nor human will hurt or kill on my holy mountain. The holy earth will be the whole earth will be brimming and knowing God alive, a living knowledge of God and love of God, ocean deep and ocean wide. Let's just take a few moments to think. How is God calling you? In what little corner of this earth is God expecting to work with you to change, to become a better place?